Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central uh, School District Board of Education meeting for November 22nd, 2021. Can I have a motion to go into executive session for, to, discuss, to discuss contractual negotiations and matters specific to the employment history of a particular individual? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Can I have a motion to go back into public session? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education for November 22nd, 2021. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for a moment of silence for our armed forces and those in our community who have lost loved ones? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag, United, United States, States of America, America, and to the, the republic, republic for which, which it stands, stands one nation, under God, God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. I apologize for coming out late. Yvette, did we have any sign-ups for public comment? No, we did not. No, okay. So we're going to go right into the superintendent's report, Rowan. Good evening. I, I also want to echo the apology for coming in late. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. It, it's wonderful to have uh, an audience here tonight to celebrate some really special people in our school community. So I just want to begin the recognition of our school nurses with the recognition of all of our school nurses because for many years school nurses have played an integral role in the safety and well-being of students and staff over the last 20 months that role of the school nurse has been magnified to an exponential proportion our school nurses have been remarkable in every sense of the word and they continue to impress with their expertise, their empathy, and their just genuine commitment to our students and the staff of the Yorktown Central School District. Our school nurses have at times been required to deliver sad, disappointing, and unwelcome news. It's never easy when you have to make a call to notify someone that they're going to be quarantined, especially around the holidays or a special event in their lives. We've been required to enforce mandates, and at sometimes not all the mandates made a lot of sense to us. However, regardless of the circumstances or difficult situation we faced, our school nurses have met the challenge. They've met the challenges of nursing through a pandemic with grace. Our nurses have been nothing short of heroic, and it's an honor to be here this evening to say thank you. The words thank you are uttered with the deepest sense of gratitude and appreciation. There's so much more than just two words. As we approach Thanksgiving, we're reminded of how profoundly appreciated our school nurses are and the deep impact that they've had on all of our schools. To your families who join you this evening, just want to say thank you for sharing your loved ones with our school community. All of last school year, and certainly at times this school year, our nurses have worked around the clock, often on the telephone in the evenings, weekends, holidays. And my hope is that as we begin to get back to some sense of normalcy, that you can spend more time with your families, regain the balance, that existed prior to COVID. You deserve that. Your families deserve that. And so to the families in the room, I just want to take a moment and give you a round of applause to say thank you for sharing your loved ones with us. <laughs> At this time, uh, the board, Mr. O'Shea and Ms. Uh, Mrs. O'Shea and Mr. Cole, would like to acknowledge the nurses. I'm going to approach the microphone. We're going to have a microphone at the side of the stage. And when I call each of the nurses up to present you with your certificate, I'm going to ask that you come up on stage and stay here until all of your colleagues are on stage 
the board, I'm going to ask to come around to the side here so that we can welcome our school nurses onto the stage. And then at the end, perhaps we can take one photo together. And um, Mike Rosen, you did a great job last time. Or Mrs. Horowitz, I see you in the audience. So I may ask you to just uh, take some photos. And any of my colleagues here in front, if you can take some photos and we can share those. So I'm going to make my way, so pardon me. And I'll ask members of the board to come around to the front of the dais. Or you can come We'll begin by recognizing our high school nurse. I'm not sure if this microphone is, okay, now I'm hearing myself. The certificate reads, for your commitment to the safety and well-being of all staff and students at Yorktown Central School District, dated November 22nd, 2021, uh, we'll recognize high school nurse, Ms. Kim Cortese. The next honoree for this evening not only serves as the middle school nurse, but also serves as our nurse coordinator for all of our nurses in the district. And even beyond that, she's such a resource to our community, volunteering her time to work at vaccination clinics, volunteering her time to just give back to her own community, which is absolutely remarkable gifted clinician in every sense of the word, Lisa Epstein. It's not easy to be a nurse in a four or five building. It's quite challenging because as soon as you're getting to know the children, they're on their way out the door. But no one does that quite as well as Ms. Driscoll at Crompon School. Ms. Driscoll is as devoted as they come. And I'm happy that we're not having all of the Sunday conversations and the evening conversations regarding uh, positive situations in the building, but you've handled it with such grace. Ms. Barbara Driscoll. In our K-3 schools, our children come, come in perhaps most vulnerable and looking for a reassuring face and someone who's supportive, someone who can welcome them and meet them where they are. And very few people have the gift that Ms. Brunel has. Susan Brunel. Our next nurse that we're recognizing this evening is new to our school district. And in fact, there's a really inspiring story that we'll share with you later on. So I won't say too much about our newest nurse at Brookside, Mrs. Ammerling, will be speaking um, about a really, really impressive situation that Ms. Cassiopo addressed in our schools. Nicole Cassiopo.
we have nurses who work in various parts of our school building and various parts of our school community equally committed to every nurse's office in the district and they do such an extraordinary job. We'll begin with, and Mrs. Keegan is the former nurse at Brookside and now she gets to serve so many different schools in our school district and we appreciate her expertise. Jackie Keegan. Mrs. Elkins has worked across our district serving in so many school buildings, making each nurse's office that she travels to her own and her home and making all students who come in feel welcomed and appreciated. It's not easy to do when you're in so many different schools and Mrs. Elkin has done that with such great skill, precision and empathy. Linda Elkin. Our last honoree for this portion of the presentation is the school nurse in St. Pat's. And Marion has just done such a great job. Sometimes it's a challenge when you don't work in one of the five school buildings staying connected, but Marion Shore has done that and has done that at a really, really high level. We appreciate all the expertise that Marion brings to our school district, to St. Pat's. So at this time, we will recognize Marion Fitzmorris. If we can have one more big round of applause for all of our honorees. So at this time, um, before we have you move on with your evening and then we get to the second portion of this recognition ceremony, I'd love for us to all get together for a picture. Before we do that also, I just want to acknowledge some people who are in the audience. I see so many faculty and staff who are here. Many of our administrative team are here. I appreciate you all being here. Uh, my assistant, Joanna O'Duarte, is in the audience. And if anyone knows anything about how our operation works, you all know that Joanne printed these and Joanne put them into the packets. And so I appreciate all of Joanne's efforts. And Lisa Scanapico from our facilities department is also joining us. So thank you all so much. I see so many colleagues from our buildings here as well. I appreciate you being here tonight. So if we can get together for a photo, we have members of our team who will take a picture. So if we can have maybe the nurses come in front of the board. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we have only recognition 
ceremony, so if the board can stay in line, we have one more. So we have uh, another part of our recognition ceremony this evening. You, you can present up here. I'll call you up from here. On Thursday, November 4th, there was a harrowing incident at Brookside School in which our school nurse and several other staff members activated our emergency protocols. This quick thinking and attention to our students resulted in potentially saving a student's life. At this time, I will invite Ms. Deirdre Amling to the podium or to the stage to share the details of this remarkable situation. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Carbone, Dr. Hatter, and the entire board for this opportunity to recognize and honor several of the Brookside staff. First, a great big thank you to all of the district's nurses, as I know how much you do on behalf of the, of the Yorktown students. Tonight's recognition is certainly well-deserved. It is with the utmost of gratitude that I share a situation that occurred at Brookside on November 4th, where one of our students was choking during lunch. The incident and how it was handled demonstrates the professionalism, care, and teamwork of our staff. In this event, one of our teaching assistants, Ms. Trish Donnellan, needed to leave the cafeteria to assist a student. Before she did so, she asked her colleague, Ms. Lana Sinagra, if she would look after the class for a few minutes. Ms. Sinagra willingly accepted and began to actively supervise the students. As she was walking throughout the aisles, she noticed a student visibly in distress as he began to choke. She didn't hesitate and immediately got the student into the skilled and careful hands of our nurse, Ms. Nicole Cassiopo, who immediately began to administer the Heimlich maneuver. After many attempts, Ms. Cassiopo was finally successful in dislodging the food that was caught. While this indeed was a nerve-wracking situation, you wouldn't know it as Ms. Cassiopo remained steady, calm, and focused. This in incident demonstrated the quick thinking and teamwork that resulted in the best possible outcome for the student and I am beyond grateful to these three ladies. For if any one of them did anything different in the chain of events, we might be telling a very different story tonight. I also want to recognize our director of facilities, Mr. Dennis Verboys. Dennis is always so supportive and responsive to Brookside's needs, and it just so happens that he was meeting with me that day. Coincidentally, we entered the room just as Ms. Cassiopo had begun the Heimlich maneuver on the student, and Dennis remained, actively participated, and supported us during the ordeal and until he knew that the student was going to be okay. I thank him for all the work he has done to support us all throughout the year, and certainly for his genuine care and concern for our student and the staff on that day. So as it is Thanksgiving week, it is just such a perfect time to recognize and give thanks to Ms. Donnellan, Ms. Sinagra, Mr. Raboys, and certainly Ms. Cassiopo. On behalf of everyone at Brookside, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you did on behalf of our wonderful and healthy student. Thank you. At this time, we have a certificate of recognition to honor all who were involved in this, let's be honest, really frightening incident that our staff handled so brilliantly. Ms. Cassiopo, you were remarkable. Ms. Sinagra, Ms. Donlan, you were equally remarkable. Mr. Verboys, someone put you in that room, and I'm just thankful you were there 
to assist a student in distress, and to Mr. Casserini and Ms. Ammerling, thank you for your leadership of Brookside. This happened under your supervision, under your care and direction, and we really appreciate your efforts in ensuring that our students were safe. So at this time, I'm going to call up our honorees, and the certificate just reads, for your heroism and dedication to the children of Yorktown. And we'll begin with our nurse, who so bravely and, and so just masterfully performed the Heimlich maneuver to save this student, Nicole Cassiopa. <laughs> Next, we'll honor Ms. Patricia Donlan. We now honor Ms. Lana Sanagra. Next honoree is our Director of Facilities, Mr. Dennis Verboys. <laughs> and finally, we're going to recognize and honor the two administrators in Brookside School. So I'd like to call up Mr. Casarini. And then finally, the leader of Brookside School who just oversees every aspect of operation with Mr. Casserini, Ms. Ammerling. So at this time, we'll take a picture with the board. At this time, uh, I'd like this group to have a picture with the board. We know now to move toward the front of the stage and away from the screen, so I think that this will go a little quicker than the last one. So uh, please, let's uh, get together for a photo. If we can have one final round of applause for all of our honorees. We also have, this evening, the board will be voting or passing a resolution to acknowledge all who participated in, in this heroic event, and also to honor all of our school nurses. So at this time, I'll just turn over my presentation back to our board president. Okay, um, here we go. So these are certificates of resi rec recognition resolutions. Whereas during COVID-19 pandemic, the role of the school nurses in the Yorktown Central School District has changed to meet the evolving needs of students and their families, staff, and the school community. 
And whereas the school nurses in this district have worked closely with the superintendent of schools, other district leaders, and the New York State and County Department of Health to follow the require, requirements of law and provide essential support during these unprecedented times. And whereas the Board of Education wishes to recognize the critical services provided by the school nurses in maintaining the health and well-being of children, families, and the school community, as well as for performing the services with professionalism, empathy, and competence to protect and promote student health, facilitate optimal development, and advance academic success. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education, in recognition of the important services provided by the school nurses for the students of the district schools, Brookside, Mohansic, Crompond, Mildred E. Strang, and the high school, their professionalism and ability to evolve as the situation requires, their dedication and for the going above and beyond during the COVID-19 pandemic, hereby issue certificates of recognition and appreciation to Lisa Epstein, Barbara Driscoll, Nicole Cassiopo, Susan Burnell, Kimberly Cortez, Marion Fitzsimmons, Jacqueline Keegan, and Beth Pfeiffer. And then we have a second one. Yep. Whereas on November, it's more. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Whereas on November 4th, 2021, a student at Brookside Elementary School had a choking incident, and due to the swift and skilled action of st several staff members, the student's life was saved. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby recognizes the heroic actions for the following staff members in their quick thinking, acting in skillful and expeditious manner, and saving a student's life. Nicole Cassiopo, Dennis Burboys, Patricia Donellan, Lana Sinagra, Deidre Amelie, and Joe Casarini, and further resolved that the board, in recognition of and appreciation of the hero heroism and leadership of these staff members, issues certificates of recognition and appreciation to them for the heroism. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Juan, did you want to take a two minute recess? Go ahead. So the board's going to just take a brief two minute recess. It'll allow anyone who wants to uh, continue on with their evening uh, at home that opportunity. I see young children in the audience. You have an early day of school. You're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But uh, if you choose to leave, have a great evening. Get home safely. And the board wishes you a very happy Thanksgiving holiday recess. with the uh, superintendent's report. Um, there have been a couple of developments in town, pardon the pun, uh, with regard to developments in town. So there was a public presentation that the town delivered with regard to some anticipated uh, housing developments that are being considered. Uh, there were over 400 units that are being accounted for at this time. Uh, although the projected impact on the school of 400 units is 40 students, which, which sounds low, however, it's using uh, a sound demographic practice. Um, what I'm going to ask is whether the board would like me to proceed by having our demographer um, update the study. If you recall, Dr. Saversky in 2018 presented at a board meeting publicly a enrollment study that took into account the housing developments that were being considered at that time. So what I would recommend is that we would move forward and have Dr. Saversky um, renew that study looking at the current housing developments that are uh, being considered because we certainly know that Yorktown schools are, are terrific schools and, and they're very uh, sought after and many people would like to send their children here. So to really understand the um, the enrollment projections, not just from this housing development, but as as people move into the housing developments from this community and who backfills those units. So that's something that if it if it's okay, I'd like to proceed and, and give that some consideration. Uh, do we have consensus to move forward? Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, with regard to the test to stay option, I've made no secret of my desire for Westchester County Department of Health to implement a test to stay option. So for anyone who's familiar with the quarantine protocols, if a student is 
um, subject to or, or exposed to someone who's COVID positive in accordance with the DOH guidelines. And the DOH rules are if you're unvaccinated or you've had COVID more than three months ago, you have to quarantine for 10 days. I've been pushing for a test to stay. COVID does not transmit easily through our schools. We have so many safety precautions in place. The ventilation is excellent in so many regards. The uh, other mitigation measures that we've taken really demonstrated that when students go out on COVID uh, quarantine, they're returning healthy from their quarantine. So what, I would, what I've been asking for is a test to stay. If a student's exposed rather than quarantine, we can give the parents the option to come in have their child COVID tested. If they're negative, they get to go to class that day. And then the and if not, then they would go home. So there is a lot of movement on the county front with that. I anticipate a decision coming out in the next couple of weeks. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to proceed with this test to stay. We're, we're already registered as a limited service laboratory. We have a license to do this. So we're ready, willing, and able. Our goal is to keep our students in school. We want our students in school every day. So if we can avoid a quarantine situation, uh, then I think it's something that, that would be good for our students. So more to come on that. I've just been speaking about it at each of our Board of Education meetings and I wanted to make sure that we can provide the community and the board with the most current information. This is a very important step to maintaining the continuity of instruction for our students, which has been so integral to our planning. And then finally, this has been some year. And after this meeting, we have one more Board of Education meeting in the 2021 calendar year, and that's on December 13th. And what I've asked uh, my team and my cabinet to do, if it's okay with the board, is to present to the board a comprehensive year-end update from every department an update from our facilities department, an update from our PPS department, from our technology department, from our business office. Um, it has been a very interesting and very different calendar year in our schools and, and I'd like to, although we do provide regular updates and we do present um, to have all of that information, especially as we head into budget season because once we come back from the holiday recess in December, we're in full um, budget mode at that point, and just about every meeting will have a budget presentation. So in advance of that, I, I, I'll be asking my team to, under my next superintendent's report, to present to the board a more comprehensive update on the various departments and, and what have we accomplished and, and what questions are on our mind as we head into budget season. And um, I look forward to having that opportunity at the December 13th Board of Education meeting. That concludes my report. I appreciate uh, the time to present. Can I just, um, the town developments, um, it, it seems like they're all on one side of town. Correct. Which is gonna heavily impact one. The Brookside side of town is where the developments are slated. Correct. Correct. And um, then once third grade is concludes, then the impact is felt on all the school buildings. Correct, and, and, and our um, understanding of what a development brings in the way of students it goes back to the last development was Crompon Crossing. How many students per unit were we did we see from that unit, that Tom, development? Tom, I believe there were 27 units in the it's Crompon a, Crossing. On average, 1.2 students per unit sold. And where the town is telling us we're going to get 0.1 students. 0 0.1, 0. yes. With Crompon Crossing, I believe there were 27 units that resulted in 43 students um, coming to the district. I believe those were the numbers. So I think it's important that Siversky update the study so we have accurate numbers based upon not nationwide averages, but what Yorktown averages are, correct? Yeah, and there, there are a lot of different factors. So we will look at, uh, um, my assumption is that Dr. Siversky will look at average household size in the town of Yorktown because ultimately the families that are moving in will fill that. So how many students are, are coming to our schools as a result? So those are all questions that um, Dr. Siversky will be prepared to answer. And once he has updated the study, it's not a full review of, it's not a full renewal of the study. It's updating the different developments because three years ago when we commissioned the study originally, there were different projects that were being considered. And now the projects have evolved in um, with, with some new projects that weren't considered. So I, I do see it prudent to have Dr. Siversky review the study again. Just one last comment. Dr. Siversky has worked in our district and many districts for as long as I've been on the board. Tom, how are his projections 
His projections have been um, remarkably accurate uh, over a period of time. Okay, so he's the report to trust. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jackie? Yes, so go ahead. after he's done updating his study, can he give us a presentation as to what he believes is going to happen? Absolutely. I think it's also important to point out not to panic the Brookside parents. <laughs> all the children who come to the district don't all come as kindergartners. Right? They don't so all come in. It gets spread out amongst absolutely. almost all the grade levels. And not even all at the same time. Yeah. So this will be a staggered implementation. This is not happening in the next year or two. So there's time here for us. And, and we're trying to get ahead of this plan, understand what the needs are, both from a space and a programmatic perspective. But yes, you're absolutely correct. So the students that we gain as a result of any developments or any uh, migration is, it's relative. There are 13 grade levels that we have in our school district. So the students will be spread across grade levels. There are. Uh, depending on the age, they may not even be in Brookside because we have uh, three other schools that they can attend uh, outside of the K-3 area. So yes, it's not all coming at once. It's not all coming immediately. So we do have time. And I think the prudent course would just be to plan, understand what we can anticipate in the next two to five years. And we welcome all students. It isn't a matter of not welcoming. Absolutely. It's just a matter of making sure we have the correct preparation mm -hmm. so every student has what they need. Absolutely. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to board reports. Policy committee, Cheryl. Sure. Uh, I don't have anything new to report since my last uh, update, but we will be meeting on November 30th, and I'll have an update after that meeting. Thank you. Audit. So we wrapped up the external audit uh, cycle for... Uh, the past school year that ended uh, at the end of June, and the committee is meeting again the first week of December to uh, take a look at the draft of the internal audit uh, report for this year. That's Thank all. you. Fiscal advisory. Uh, nothing new at this time. Um, I'm going to reach out probably tomorrow to the administration and see when our next meeting should be based on where they are in the um, cycle for the budget renewal. Terrific. And steering, again, is has been a little slow, but we do have our summer of 2022 job is out on the street. We're waiting for bids to come back in. And the hope is that if they come in and the, or, uh, the construction manager has enough time to vet them, we will be hopefully accepting and awarding the bids in the December meeting. So that that's the hope. Okay. I'm going to move on to board action items. I have a motion to approve... The November 8, 2021 board meeting minutes. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye opposed? Um, can I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report for October 2021? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye opposed? Can I have a motion to approve the claims audit report for October 2021? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye opposed? Can I have a motion to approve the extra classroom activity report for uh, October 2021? So mm -hmm. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Personnel. Upon recommendation of the superintendent, uh, a motion that the following be approved under certified personnel. We have appointments, part-time appointments. We have um, extra duty, um, unpaid leave of absence, uh, resignations for the purpose of retirement. <laughs> under classified personnel, we have appointments to civil service, stipends, unpaid leave of absence, addition to the substitute list, and a removal for, to the subs from the substitute list. So move. Second. Second. Discussion, Ron, do you want to say anything? <laughs> Nothing that hasn't already right. been said. It's a sad day uh, when this vote gets taken. All right. And, and but what I'm referencing <laughs> is the board will be officially be accepting the retirement of Mr. Cole and Mrs. O'Shea. So that, that's what I'm referencing when I say it's going to be sad when the board actually, board actually takes that vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> Nobody is happy. We, 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 we will wish you well, but we will miss you terribly. <laughs> okay. Budget transfers. Um, a motion to approve the budget transfers as listed below. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye opposed? Uh, under curriculum, I have PIPs. A motion to approve the following Yorktown Congress of Teachers professional improvement proposals. And they're listed below. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye opposed? Special Ed, a motion to arrange the following placements as of November 22nd, 2021. 
So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Gifts, grants, and donations. A motion to approve the following gifts, grants, and donations with gratitude at Yorktown High School. A compass wall art from Teresa Lafredo and $2,000 from the PTSA for Senior Day guest speaker Matt Bellis. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're up to board comments. Pete? I'm good. Lisa? Um, I just want to echo the thanks to this, the nurses in our district. I mean, even just on a personal level, every nurse I've ever encountered from my three children has been just amazing, no matter what the situation is. Throughout COVID, the nurses that I spoke to, either as a board member or as a parent in the district, have been comforting, calm, just a, a beacon for us, and I'm, I'm forever grateful. And when I heard about the incident um, at Brookside, while it was frightening and terrible, I was not surprised to hear our staff's reaction to that. I was not surprised to hear that they had the ability and the, and the thought to save that child. And this week of Thanksgiving, I think we can all be very, very grateful that we have the team we have. Thank you. Cheryl? I echo similar thoughts. Um, as a parent, um, with children who have been in the district and who currently aren't, one is currently is in the district, uh, there's no doubt you realize the value of a nurse because I don't think any child goes to 13 years in school and isn't that in that <laughs> nurse's office. But tonight we truly realized the value of our nurses. And uh, I just want to say thank you to them. We, we definitely appreciate you. And thank you to the staff at Brookside who was able to intervene at that critical moment. Uh, what a very powerful moment uh, they created, and I'm so thankful that they were there. Uh, on a lighter note, I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, and hopefully everyone enjoys time with their family and friends, and um, just enjoy the few days, however you spend them. Thank you. Rashmi? I, I think our nurses are truly remarkable in every building and uh, at the district level. Um, like uh, Lisa and Cheryl, um, I, I have two in the high school, and uh, you know I've had my fair share of interactions with the nurses, and and I know they work late. I've been on the phone with them late at night, um, and they have always given me sound advice, answered any questions I may have had. They are really just remarkable and a dedicated group of professionals. And happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Mike, I mean. The three of you said it so well, I can't really add anything to that, but I totally and wholeheartedly agree. Um, you don't recognize sometimes the importance of certain positions. Um, and not that I want to say we take them for granted, but we do see them day in and day out perform incredible feats, and uh, it is amazing. Um, so thank you to all of our nurses and other uh, staff members that were there for that. Um, and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And it is appropriate time of the year because it is Thanksgiving and we're all supposed to talk about what we're grateful for and thankful for. And we are thankful for our nurses, for our entire staff. We have an amazing staff in this district and everybody steps up to do what they need to do at every critical moment. And I can't be more grateful to, to be in Yorktown than I am. It, it's an amazing district. So I thank you all and I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Ron, Lisa, Tom. Just have to uh, mention a couple of things in addition to Thanksgiving wishes, which I will get to in a moment. Um, on our website, the cultural awareness and equity feedback forms are there. Um, we've had uh, some people provide written comment. We have had uh, fewer people, but some people have registered for in-person meetings. That link will stay there for, a few, I don't know, a couple more weeks. We haven't made a determination on the endpoint at this point. Once we see the volume of um, submissions diminish, we'll make a determination, but it remains open for anyone who wishes to submit feedback. And then just finally, happy Thanksgiving. 2021 has been filled with challenges, and I just want to take a moment because they won't do this for themselves, but I want to acknowledge our Board of Education as well, because they, they sit here so tirelessly, and they sit here in committee meetings for hours upon hours, and. Um, they're so invested in the work of our school district, and I'm just delighted to work with them. They are just so student-centered in everything that they do, every decision they make, every policy they pass, every dollar we spend. And I really appreciate all of their efforts. Our faculty, staff, our, our principals, assistant principals, 
um, our directors, some who joined us this evening. I, I really appreciate everything that everyone does. Um, and also some of our community partners. I see some of our officers in the back and I, I thank them because they're wonderful to our schools. Our SROs are, are, are top class and the absolute best. So I'm grateful for them and grateful for so many of the members of our community. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope you enjoy the time with your family and friends. Lisa, Tom, are you good? All right, um, that there was no public comment? No. All right, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.